Our last match today brings together Nottingham Forest being taken well forward now by that well-known combination of Brian Clough and Peter Taylor and Sheffield United where manager Jimmy Cyril is striving so hard to stop the slide that took them out of the first division. Nottingham Forest against Sheffield United, ATV's cameras there, commentator Hugh Johns, Forest in the dark shirts. Clark picking up uh, Robertson. And they just let him pick his spot for that corner and comes to Martin O'Neill and there's got to be one goal. No! Was that in and out? Well, well, well. There's Curran coming in now. And it goes for the corner. Well, that was a remarkable let off. Sheffield United all standing about. Sheffield United standing about as Robertson knocks this ball in. Comes to O'Neill. He has all the time in the world. Now, this ball, does it go in under the bar? It does and out again, but it didn't cross the line. Going near post. Guthrie got it away. Clark heads in there. Offside, surely, Bowyer. No, he's all right. Eddie Cahoon can hardly believe it. Bowyer has made it 1 0 Forest. We've been playing for 11 minutes. The Forest fans have gone wild, but clearly there has got to be a little bit of argument about the legality of that. Here's the corner coming in. We'll look for Bowyer as the ball is cleared out. Was he onside? Well, no, it looked very much as though number three. Garner kept him onside. McGovern knocking it off with oh yeah Clark driving in. Butlin he's got it this time and he's onside this time and it's 2-0. Good smart thinking by Barry Butlin. I can see now this driving run in a moment from Clark. This is what really set it up. Bangs it across and Butlin spotted it Right boot, Brown going the wrong way, couldn't get back. Garner then for Sheffield United. Hamilton knocks it on for Ludlam. O'Neill, number eight, going with Ludlam. In for Hamilton. Good ball, Edwards. That was handball, and that was McGovern giving away a penalty. That was a very foolish thing. He knew he'd done it the minute the minute it had happened. There was no need for it at all. There's McGovern beaten. Now he goes back into the box. There. The left hand up. Penalty. Hamilton. It's 2-1. Chico Hamilton's third goal of the season. Second from the penalty spot. And that one moment. As he drives it left side. In fact, Middleton went the right way. Down for O'Neill. Hoiked up there and Curran's on side. Curran finding to get it back. Boyer. And it's three. Remarkable goal for Ian Boyer, which delights the Nottingham Forest fans. Really was remarkable. That hoiked up ball, Curran on side. Now a fine bit of goalkeeping here from Brown. He was dead unlucky to lose the ball. Curran did well to knock it back. And Bowyer is in. Now come. Curran got through two, got through three. And a shot on for Anderson. No, the shot for Curran. And there it is. Terry Curran. And how he deserves that goal because it's all down to him right from the start. 4 0. Look at him now. Gets a bit of luck here. The referee plays advantage as Garner tried to stop him. He's away from Garner. He goes again. There's another one gone. That was Ludlam. All on his own. Chased now by the substitute Kenworthy. The ball off to his right. Nice return ball this. From Anderson. Bingo. Terry Curran. In for O'Neill. Back for McGovern. Stretched for Curran. Anderson to spur Forrest forward again. In for Boyer. Curran. And he's still driving in there. And the shot there, beautifully in for Peter With, although he didn't hammer it as hard as he should. It's 5 1. Lovely bit of unselfish play by Terry Curran eventually. 
Henderson playing this ball in. Bowyer sticking it in for Curran. He should have been tackled out of it, wasn't. Might have had a half chance himself, but sticks it for With, who topped his shot. Brown got a touch, but it still goes in the back of the net. 5-1. Calvert then for Sheffield United. Franks. Frank Clark for Forrest. Come down for Butlin, to With. For Robertson. He goes against Franks. Curran can knock it back in again. And the shot is there for O'Neill, who didn't get it. Oh, he measured it, struck it well, but didn't score. Now it's Curran. That looked like a touch of the handballs, but not given by Kenworthy. Ludlam robbed in possession. Bowyer. Still the pressure on. Anderson. There's a gap for him to attack. And he got there. He got there. Viv Anderson. The very first goal of his career. If this is 42nd appearance for Forrest. That's brought him to their feet again. 6-0. There was so much happening here. This first off coming back from Curran. Half clear. O'Neill's shot. Charge down. Still it was on for Curran. Runs back in again. Looked like a penalty for a second. Not given. And now we wait for the number two. After Bowyer wins and fights and grabs this ball. Here's number two, Anderson. Look at the gap in front of him. He sees it. He goes in there. And there's the drive. It struck Brown but went on into the net. Six is the score. Through by Greenoff, Jones is after it, Pearson shot go! Our last match today brings us to the first division game that promised to have more bite and meaning to it, I suppose, than any other played yesterday, and so it proved. Nottingham Forest, fresh up from the second division and winners of their first two games against Derby County, just a few miles up the motorway. One point from their first couple of games. But, of course, what made it more of a headline maker was that it brought together the side Brian Clough is so successfully building at Nottingham against the club he left at Derby. A crowd of 28,000 at the city ground Nottingham. ATV's cameras were there as well with commentator Hugh Johns. Nottingham Forest are in the dark shirts. Woodcock has gone over to take the uh, corner. Kent Burns is in the box with Larry Lloyd. There's plenty of height there. Lloyd was in. And Wolf drives it. And Wolf scores it. 31 minutes into the game. Peter Wirth keeps up his goal again record. Everton, Bristol City, and now Derby County. Forest fans salute him. Woodcock's corner swinging in the big figure of Larry Lloyd unsettling Derby as he comes back to Peter Wirth. Dramatic drive to Bolton's right. Rather fortunate that uh, Derby find themselves still only one goal down. One for Woodcock to chase. And golly, that boy can go. Really can go. Oh, what a superb bit of football by another good youngster. Gave the ball away. O'Neill. Robertson coming in. With number two. Two nothing. Peter with. Two nothing. The electrifying speed of Woodcock. Dashing away with the ball. A superb tackle back by Langer the ball, O'Neill to the far post, Robertson crosses it in, and with the easiest goal he'll ever score. Offering himself again. And it's always behind O'Neill, ready to help out. Burns can go for McGovern if he wants to, but 
decides to go forward. Anderson. O'Neill. Anderson again. Good line ball for Wynn. Faced by Powell. O'Neill through. Slips away from them. Looks for Woodcock. Comes across now for Robertson. Goal number three. John Robertson. 33 minutes into the second half. John Robertson twisting the knife in the gaping wounds that Forrest have inflicted on Derby. All starting on the right side with that superb little bit of football that let O'Neill free. And the ball came across the box. Robertson fought for it, got it, and tucked it away. And so it is that Nottingham Forest are now the only first division side still with a 100% record. And London clubs have their opportunity of pitting themselves against Forest in the next week. West Ham go to Nottingham for the League Cup tie on Tuesday. And then Forest come down to Highbury to play Arsenal next Saturday. <laughs> against Nottingham Forest. Forest, unbeaten in the league since last November, in the last eight of the European and Football League Cups. While it's been a grey and misty morning in London, even so a crowd of 50,000 were at White Hart Lane awaiting the arrival of the Football League champions. And here they come, Nottingham Forest, champions of England, unbeaten in their last 37 games, unbeaten in their last 39 league games, and with just one defeat in their last 59 games. These men have really created records that take your breath away. And you don't need me to tell you who's behind it all. Here he is, Brian Clough, of course, manager extraordinary. And he'd be the first to tell you that the man just going out of the picture there, Peter Taylor, his right-hand man, has had just as much to do with this phenomenal success as he has. Brian Clough getting a great reception from this Tottenham crowd. That's good to see, and you have to admit that he deserves it. This then is the Forest team today, and they come with a heavy injury list without Kenny Burns, John McGovern, Colin Barrett, Frank Clark, Martin O'Neill. Even so, Forest have faced this sort of crisis before, not least when they won 3-2 against Everton at Goodison Park in the League Cup last Tuesday. The only question today is can they maintain this magnificent record against this Tottenham side? Well, Spurs have got Glenn Hoddle fit, but goalkeeper Barry Danes has not made it, and 20-year-old Mark Kendall makes his second appearance the first was last week at Norwich. Well, it's the pass here for Ardenas. It's a beautiful pass if McAllister can get there. Anderson did well to stop him. And that very nearly went home, though, as Lee and Hollow were both in there. That was some good work by McAllister. And a good save there from Peter Shilton. The shot by John Pratt. Forrest was certainly in trouble a moment before when McAllister turned that ball in and turned it in so well. And then Pratt let go, and Shilton held on to it. Lacey then. Lee. within a foot of the penalty area. Two Spurs players in the wall, in fact, now. Perriman and McAllister. Now, will Hobble, will Ardenas, or will Taylor? Direct free kick, of course, handball. Hobble. Oh, he's hit the crossbar! And they are 
thankful to scramble that one away. And the ball out of play. Well, Hoddle, as he took that free kick, a beautiful little curler. Uh, Shilton really hadn't a prayer, but he was saved by his crossbar. Gemmell playing it for Robertson. Now Mills. Played in nicely for Anderson. Those long legs have got the cross in. And it was very nearly David Needham. Anderson got in well there. And uh, Needham, who loves to come up and attack, just couldn't quite find the header. Holmes. Holmes for Taylor. Now, can he get it across? He has. He's got it across beautifully. Shilton only half getting it away. And it's in there. And it's Lee who's done it. Ruled out. Linesman flagging. It will not count. Lee doesn't know it yet. Linesman's there. And now they know that it's been ruled out. And Forrest have got it underway again. And it could only have been the linesman flagging for a foul on Peter Shilton as that long cross from Peter Taylor came in. And although Lee hammered it home, the linesman had got his flag up. Mills on the far side. Bertels. And now with Anderson. And it comes to Gemmell. He didn't really mean it, but it came to him in the end. Anderson, that's the goal! For Nottingham Forest, beating the uh, goalkeeper Mark Kendall, and Viv Anderson has done it again, taking that ball well into the Tottenham penalty area, and then finding a really swift shot to beat Kendall to put Forest 1-0 into the lead. Pratt, Martinez, and here come Forrest. Well, they've looked certainly more menacing in attack since they scored than at any other time in the game. They are getting a few men up. And here's Robertson. Oh, he's sending Naylor one way, then the other. Oh, and a brilliant goal by Robertson. That surely is going to wrap it up. And that was a virtuoso piece of wing play by John Robertson. Just look at the game, the way he turned Terry Naylor once, twice, three times, and then a stunning shot across the face of the goal and Mark Kendall, and just inside the far post. Peter Taylor. Oh, Spurs have got to score one now, and quickly to keep their heads up. And here's Hoddle, can he do something? Oh, and he very nearly caught Shilton out! Delightful piece of play by Hoddle. A beautifully placed little chip shot, and it uh, caught Peter Shilton backpedalling. And in the end, he just got the touch that mattered, and over the top it went. Gemmell finding Bertels. Oh, this looks promising if he can find Woodcock, and he can, but Woodcock is offside. Nothing much in it. He's offside. It won't count, Tony. <laughs> But here's Peter Taylor. Wait a minute, that's a good shot, and that's a brilliant save by Shilton again. Such virtue in that piece of goalkeeping. Taylor hit it well, and I certainly had the impression there was a flick of a deflection on the way to Shilton. But his handling was absolutely supreme. to Pratt. Oh, it's a goal! That counts! Shilton beaten at last, but beaten by a cruel deflection. And it'll be John Pratt who will claim that to go. Pratt shot, a deflection, and Shilton beaten. Whistle had gone. 
and uh, Peter Taylor and Brian Clough both off the bench again. There's a certain amount of animation now in that uh, Nottingham Forest bench. It's with Gamal. Oh, yeah. Oh, and it might go all the way for battles. That's given. Three one it is. Mark Kendall picks the ball out of the net. And Gary Bertles goes through there. The two, you say the two managers there nudging each other, Peter Taylor and Brian Clough, and Peter Taylor saying, that's it, it's over. As Bertles went through there and stuck it wide of Mark Kendall and making the scoreline Spurs one, Forest three. Emilio. And offside. Against Tony Woodcock. He's done a great job, in fact, today for Nottingham Forest because he's always been outnumbered up front, just he and Bertels. Four in the midfield, four at the back. Here's Velia going on past Archie Gamble, but Forest get it away again. And the final whistle goes with Nottingham Forest record intact. Peter Taylor goes away, and Brian Clough goes away. What a fantastic record he and his team have brought to. White Hart Lane, and in fact, the record that they've kept. The crowd can only look on and wonder how on earth this man does it. One defeat now in 60 games, unbeaten in the last 38, and in the last 40 in the Football League. These men in red shirts of Nottingham Forest have set records, really, that I would have thought are going to be unbeatable. Brian Clough, well, what can you say about him? He's got a charisma and a magic that nobody else in the game seems to have at the moment. You saw for yourself the reception he got from the Spurs crowd before the game. Well, afterwards, I spoke to him about that, but also about a game where Forrest scored three times and conceded one. Yeah, we were not too happy with the goals we conceded. We're never happy with goals we conceded. We're very greedy with, you know, with our mm. the goals we either score or goals we concede. We're not too happy with that. Is it fair to say that your philosophy when you came here was first of all with four men across the middle of the field and four at the back to contain Tottenham and then maybe to strike on the break? It's certainly fair to say that we had four men across the middle of the field, but not fair to say that we were trying to contain Tottenham. We don't try and contain anybody apart from you. <laughs> you mean you do contain them? You don't try, you actually do it? Is that yes, what we nice? do it without telling everybody. Yes. This, this record, is, is it something that you're aware of? Is it something that's a burden for you and the players? Or? We try and shove it at the back of our minds as best we can, and we take every game. You've heard it a million times before, but we do take every game as it comes, and every game is a mountain to us. Tottenham's Cup final was today, and we play an awful lot of Cup finals, week in, week out. We went to Everton on Tuesday, and there was a Cup final there. And we got a result there, and we've got one today, and we'll have one next week, and, you know. Some of your players looked physically a little bit on the floor, shall we say, towards the end of the game, and I suppose that's justifiable and reasonable, isn't it, to expect that? No, it's not. With all the games they've had? No, it's not. They're not on the floor, and they're not jaded. I thought the opposition was. And they won't and will not be on the floor until we're lying on a beach in Kalamalaw with you, all being well. You were invited last year, and the first or second week of May. You got a marvellous reception yourself when you came out from the Tottenham crowd, and you were looking and you were bowing at them, and, and people regard you something of a messiah. Are, are you unique in management, do you think, yourself? Brian, I worked with you now for many, many years. You know me inside out. I'm me. Certainly not unique, and certainly not different. Just me. One of the big reasons for Forrest's continuing success was the form yesterday of Peter Shilton in goal. Both Brian Clough and Peter Taylor have said before that Peter's worth 10 points a season to them, and that's what wins championships. And Shilton's yesterday performance was a winning one. Anderson did well to stop him, and that very nearly went home, though, as Lee and Hollow were both in there. That was some good work by McAllister, and a good save there. Well, I personally feel, but, you know, it's only opinion, obviously, that he's the best goalkeeper in the country. But it's opinion that stimulates the interest in football, whether people get the sack or whether they're retained and all that type of thing. I feel that Peter Shilton is the best goalkeeper. I felt that since the second I paid £300,000 for him and nobody else would touch him. 
and there's all the, not controversy, but everybody says, is, should it be Ray Clements or should it be Peter Shilton and so on. In fact, you, uh, to put it on the record, are the best of buddies, aren't you? Oh, yes, of course, but obviously... Are you roomed together when you go away the greatest with arrivals, you know, I mean, uh, let's make no mistake about it. I mean, I'd give me the right arm to get back in the England team and, uh, um, you know, I've had a couple of games and, uh, you know, I felt I did reasonably well. And uh, t to sort of really establish yourself, I think you need two or three games. And hopefully uh, I'll just fight my chance and when I do get in, uh, that I do get two or three games that uh, yes. I can sort of show what I can do. So, Nottingham Forest go marching on. against Manchester City. Now, Forest were third before this game after a run of six league games without a loss. The pictures come from Central Television. The commentator at the City ground is Peter Brackley. Robertson then with the corner. Again, the short one to Hodge. And Hodge went down. And Robertson appealing that the defence on Hodge and Warren did a free kick. Linesman indeed is flagging for it. Robertson then with a the kick in. The header from Young. <laughs> Willie Young, second goal of the season, has put Forrest in front. Four minutes from half time. The referee gave the free kick. And from the cross, Willie Young has headed Forrest into the lead. Proctor. Proving ball to John Robertson. Chance to run at defenders. We'll cross into Bond. Half clearing away, and then from Buttles. And that really is the perfect start for the second half for Nottingham Forest. Just one minute into the second half, Robertson here teasing defenders down the left. There'd been a good ball from Proctor that had found him. The cross only half clear, really, by Kevin Bond. And look how well Gary Burton's jumped for the header. Beyond the reach of Joe Corrigan. Burton's away from Caton. And then for Wallace. And a lovely touch off, too. And Burton's is through here. Brilliant goal by Gary Burton's. A fine, flowing move by Forrest. That really was a splendid goal. 25 minutes into the second half. And Boris now have surely taken a real grip on this match now. Bertels, lovely flick off there from Morris. Bertels going through. And driving it past Corrigan, who almost got a hand to it. And 3 0 it ended. Another success then for Brian Clough's Forest. Gary Bertels, Willie Young, and Colin Todd obviously all thriving under his management. George, I wonder, I mean, Gary Bertels is the most extraordinary story. He couldn't do a thing at Manchester United, but since he's come back to Forest, he's hit 10 goals. How do you explain that? Well, I saw him play quite a few games at United, and as you say, nothing was going right for him, and his confidence was gone completely. He's gone back. He obviously enjoys playing for Cloughy. He's, it's his change of environment for him. And his confidence is sky high. You know, he looks at the moment like everything he touches is going to go in. But this manager-player relationship is all important. I mean, who was, who was the manager you most respected in your playing career? Well, I was fortunate. In my mind, I played under the greatest of them all, uh, Sir Matt Busby. And, uh, you know, I've never, ever come into contact with anyone better than him in the, in the management side. Have you got a, a favourite memory of Sir Matt, the, the manager? Uh, oh, there was so many. He was very subtle with his humour, you know. Half the time he didn't know what he was saying, you know, and it came out <laughs> funny. I think one of my favourites, when I was a youngster, I used to live close to him in, in Manchester. And in the early days, if you ever saw me waiting for a bus, he used to stop and pick me up in his car. And I don't tell him I told you this, he is the worst driver you've ever seen in your <laughs> life. And in the end, it got so bad, I used to hide in the bus queue so he would drive past <laughs> me. I can't imagine you waiting for a bus. <laughs> and what about Brian Clough? How would you and Brian Clough have got on, do you think, in your playing days? Uh, I don't know. I'd, uh, it's difficult to say. You know, he's, uh, he's obviously a very controversial character, and uh, I suppose you could say I was the same. Whether it would have 
blend it or gone the opposite. It, uh, it's hard to say. Very diplomatic answer. <laughs>